What's up guys, welcome to the channel, my name is Solo Q, and today I will be going over Rainbow Six North Star and the changes coming with Year 6 Season 2. But before we get started, I wanted to thank you for watching this video as it's my first upload to YouTube. Yep, you're among the first to see where this wild journey will take us, so thank you again for watching. Anyways, we will be discussing the new operator, her bio, loadout, and many more things, so stay tuned and let's get right into the video. Well, well, well. Here you have it, folks. Year 6 Season 2 is upon us. The new operator for this season is Mina Sky, aka Thunderbird. She is from the Nakota tribe, which is in the province of Saskatchewan, Canada. It also happens to be where my wife is from. Thunderbird is part of the Starnet Aviation Organization as a pilot and is 36 years old. She's 5 foot 6 and 154 pounds. Mina is huge on community, and it was the first lesson taught to her by her mother. Mina fell in love with engines and helicopters at a very young age. Her father taught her to understand these things before she learned to fly one. Mina enrolled in the Bold Eagle program at 17 years old, and she soared at military training. She continued to receive help from her community elders and native instructors while in the program, and it caused a spark to rise in her. She wanted to protect and preserve one of the things she loved the most, which was the Nakota culture. Uh, Mina eventually joined the Canadian Armed Forces and worked her way through flight school. Mina also remembered another important lesson her mother taught her, which was balance. Mina figured since she was trained on how to take a life, she should also learn how to save one. Mina entered and completed her basic medical training and stayed in the Canadian Armed Forces as an aerial mechanic. Mina has also researched hydrology. There was an issue for access to a clean source of drinking water within most of the First Nation communities, so she used her knowledge of hydrology to create and sustain clean drinking water. I think it's important to note as well that Ubisoft actually had three consultants from the Nakota Nations while making the character Thunderbird. The name Thunderbird was actually suggested by the consultants as it means the bringer of water in the Nakota Nation. The voice actress for Mina Sky actually speaks Nakota, and they tried to incorporate as much of the Nakota culture in her character as possible. If you notice the four lines on her chin, those are traditional Nakota warrior tattoos. If you look on the back of Mina's jacket, there is a word. The word Wagia is actually the, the Nakota word for Thunderbird. So the consultants in Ubisoft did a really good job of bringing this character to life. With all the Nakota culture included, that's just my opinion. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Mina came to the attention of Team Rainbow by the recommendation of Nomad. During an incident in the north that Nomad was badly hurt in, uh, she was actually rescued and saved by Mina. If Mina had not learned how to save a life, Nomad would not have survived and wouldn't be not be a part of uh, Team Rainbow. Uh, Mina is actually pretty even-tempered, and the only thing that she doesn't like is disrespect. Whether that be respect of others and their beliefs, or you know a person's right to uh, right to live. And so, with all that being said, Mina decided to make something that, mm, for lack of a better term, a mobile healing station. The Kona Healing Station is what it's been dubbed. She carries three of them, and they can be placed near anywhere around the map. All three Konas can also be picked back up and placed in another location if desired, unlike some other operator's gadget. It has a sensor that can pick up on individuals and can rotate 360 degrees. If you are injured and you are within the proximity of the Kona, it will launch a healing dart at you and it cause you to heal by 30 HP. The healing darts do have the ability to overheal, uh, so if you're at full health, uh, you can get more health, but it will diminish over time. The only downside to the Kona station is that, well, it can't determine who's a good guy and a bad guy. Meaning that if an attacker is within range of the Kona and they do not destroy it, where it has not been disabled by Thatcher's EMP grenade, they will receive the same type of healing dart as you. So just keep that in mind when you're either anchoring or roaming. Uh, yeah, so speaking of roaming, I believe the meta will be that Thunderbird will be used as a roamer based on the fact that they made her a one-armor, three-speed defender with mobile healing station. That doesn't mean that she can't be an effective anchor, I just think with those stats and her loadout, most people will use her as a roaming operator. What do you plan to do with her, though? 
roam the map looking for those frags or anchoring down on site? Let me know down in the comments. Now, let's move on to her loadout and see what she's packing in her arsenal. While playing as Thunderbird, you will have access to the Spear 308 Assault Rifle and the Spaz 15 Semi-Auto Shotgun as your choices of primary weaponry. Secondary weapons, you will have access to the Bearing 9 and the Q929 Pistol. As you all know by now, your primary gadget is the Kona Station, with two different options for your secondary gadget. Your choices will be the Impact Grenades and the Nitro Cell, or as I call it, the Flying Nokia of Death. Now, let's talk attachments for your weapon. For the Spear 308, you will have access to the Red Dot, Holographic, and Reflex Sights. For barrel attachments, you will have access to the Suppressor, Flash Hider, Compensator, and Muzzle Brake. For the underbarrel attachments, you will have the option for the Vertical Grip, or nothing at all. No angled grip here on this weapon, so uh, yeah, sorry Bolo fanboys. Uh, you will also have the ability to throw on a laser sight if you'd like. Uh, if not, then yeah, those are your choices there for the Spear. Let's move on to the Spaz-15. For the Spaz-15, you will have access to the Red Dot, Holographic, and Reflex Sights, just like on the Spear 308. However, there are no grips available for the Spaz, and the only underbarrel attachment is a laser sight. For the Bearing 9, you will have access to the Red Dot, Holographic, and Reflex Sights. You will also be able to attach a Suppressor, a Flash Hider, and a Compensator for the Barrel Attachment. As far as the underbarrel attachments, it's the lasers or nothing. For the Q929 pistol, suppressor or muzzle brake are the only barrel attachment options. Laser light or nothing at all is the only underbarrel attachment for the pistol. So yeah, there you have it folks. Uh, that's the new operator, Thunderbird. I think she's pretty cool and uh, be honest with you, I've been playing her a lot on the test server the past few days and I have to say, I find myself roaming with her more than I do anchoring on site. Uh, I've been playing uh, also on the new casual rework of Favela. Uh, Favela used to be a map that I absolutely despised playing just because it was a spawn, you know, spawn peak central. But don't get me wrong, it still has spawn peaking abilities, but not like it used to. It seems to be a lot bigger than the original with an all new design inside and out. This will make for some pretty gnarly angles to hold and uh, to make some plays with. But now let's talk about some changes made to some of the operators. It just seems like Ubisoft won't leave you Ash and Jaeger mains alone now, does it? First, it was the ACOG getting it taken away, you know, from Jaeger and Ash, and then it was Ash's flash grenades and tweaking her breaching charges, then it was the ADS nerf on Jaeger, followed by the higher recoil on his 416C. Now the recoil hammer has fallen on Ash. So I took the liberty to compare what the new recoil would look like with Ash compared to what it currently looks like before the new season. I did not attempt to try and control any of the recoil as I wanted you guys to see how and if any different it would be. The screen you will see on your left is the current ash and the screen on your right is the test server ash. So let's see what's different. As you can see, the test server ash recoil still goes up and to the right, but at a faster rate than the current ash. It seems that the recoil will be a bit more difficult to control, but I'm sure you guys will figure out how to compensate for it. Another operator that's getting somewhat of a recoil nerf is Vigil. Yeah, you know that guy that always gives you the interference on your drones and is always in the most weird, random places when you're roam clearing? Yeah, that guy. Anyways, uh, this is another comparison to the current Vigil and the test server uh, Vigil. Again, I did not attempt to control the recoil for best results. As before, on the left is current vigil, on the right, test server vigil. As you can see there, the pattern seems to be the same, but it just pulls up higher to the right faster with the recoil nerf on the test servers. But with practice, I'm sure he'll continue to be a nightmare for every attacker when he's in the right hands. Uh, two more operators that are receiving nerfs are Mira and Maestro. With these coming changes, both attackers and defenders that get close enough to Mira's windows and Maestro's evil eyes will be able to crack the glass by using a melee attack on it. 
You will also be able to melee attack bulletproof cameras and render them useless as well. This is, of course, unless your Ash, Zofia, Sledge, Maverick, or Ayana teammate has your back and destroys it with an explosive. You know, because so many people uh, play Siege, they help each other out. Well, you know, if you played this game any amount of time or solo queue like me, then you know my last statement was complete and utter sarcasm. Anyways, let's take a look at the mirror changes followed by the maestro changes. As you can see, not only will an attacker be able to melee the mirrors and evil eyes, but so can your teammates. Now, I don't know about you, but having a toxic teammate on your team that throws Ella charges at you because you picked the operator they wanted to play, among the countless other toxic encounters us siege players face, all this is going to do is just give them another way to annoy us and annoy the community. Alright, fine, fine. Soapbox ran over. I know. Moving along. Two other operators are also getting some changes. Those two would be Smoke and Finca. Now, for all you Smoke mains like myself, this is somewhat disappointing but not crippling. Take Coastline, for example. Didn't you always love getting a plant denial in Billiard's default plant? You know where you could Smoke deny the plant through the wall? Well, unfortunately, that glitch, I mean, uh, strap is no longer going to work. Also, the sound a Toxic Babe uh, makes when it's activated is also different now. The smoke cloud looks a bit different too, making it look a bit sparkly. Which begs the question for sure now. What's in the canister? Finca is also getting a buff. When Finca activates her nano charge, it will give you HP now. That's hello, it did that already. Well, yeah, but when the charge was over, you lost the HP. Now, with the changes, you won't lose any HP you gain except for the overheal. Overheal will apply to those with 100 HP, but it will diminish over time. I made a comparison for you to see. Let's have a look, shall we? Uh, quickly, just a few other things to note. Bullet hole peaks are no longer a thing, meaning that as a defender or an attacker, you can't shoot tiny bullet holes in soft walls and get cheeky kills. I know, I know, but I have to find another way to get those Reddit kill compilations. Death cams will no longer have the zoomed in view on the person that killed you. This was done in order to make the gameplay run smoother and faster according to Ubisoft. Uh, when you die, your body will disappear after a few seconds, leaving your operator icon as a tombstone where you died. So when your Ash main teammate hits the gas and just rushes into sight without clearing any utility or defenders, you'll have a tombstone at the site of their death. Glorious, isn't it? Uh, yeah, armor. 
Uh, Rook, when he comes in, armor is now adding to your health instead of having its own health. The amount of health it adds is depending on, uh, you know, what operator you are. From a one armor to a three armor, it varies in value. Lastly, I wanted to mention the muzzle attachment. I've seen a lot of people in the past, myself including, you know, ask about muzzle attachments and what attachment is best for certain guns. But now we have our answer. Flash hiders will now reduce vertical recoil and compensators, they will reduce horizontal recoil. With that being said, you will have to account for the recoil that is not being assisted by your muzzle or barrel attachment. Okay, did we get all that? We covered a lot in this video, and I think that's going to wrap up everything that's pretty much coming to Season 2 of Year 6. So let me know in the comments down below what you guys think about the changes that are coming. Also, I would greatly appreciate it if you would just give the video a like. Click that subscribe button. It's free, it only takes a few seconds to do, and it really helps out the channel. Also, I plan on doing a video for every operator, describing their backstories, along with some cool plays with that specific operator. Or if there's something you would like me to do or like me to try, suggest it down in the comments. Thank you so much for watching, and remember, watch your six.